are your September standouts, Todd? Well, we we could have gone with all the quarterbacks, Bryce Young, Stetson Bennett, Hendon Hooker, but I decided to go with guys that maybe we didn't expect to be yes. playing at this high level. I like that. And I started with Quinshawn Judkins. Let's Those are some top performers, Todd, but how about our top teams? As we enter October with five undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> I know where I'm at. Will Levis is by far their biggest playmaker and their best player on offense. That's what I do know. I also know that anytime he drops back multiple, multiple times, the offensive line has not been for teams are not great teams. So how do they look when you play against a dynamic mm -hmm. offense or a team that's willing to put up a lot of points? Tim, as we continue on with what we do know and what we don't know about our undefeated teams in the SEC, how about Tennessee? But in the end, they still gave Florida a chance. Yep. And that Florida should have <laughs> never been in that game in the end. And what I want to find out from Tennessee is do they have what it takes to take from being really good to great? How about Ole Miss, Todd? I think what we do know is they have the best run game of oh, yeah. any team in the country that doesn't run a triple option. They're fourth in the nation rushing the football, and the top three are, are triple option teams. They've got an offensive line. I talked to Lane Kiffin yesterday. He said, listen, at this point, we're much better run blocking than we are in pass protection. So we're leaning on that. Plus, you've got great running backs. Zach Evans has been outstanding. We talked about Judkins earlier. And I, those two backs and some depth behind it is the reason that they're, they're so good running the football. The question for me, what we don't know yet is, Jackson Dart, can he continue to improve? I love what we've seen from him. He plays, he's like Braveheart. Yeah. You know, like he, he wants <laughs> contact. He's physical. He's trying to do his best Tebow every time he's <laughs> out there. And But can he be a pocket passer? And can they protect him enough so that he can, he can take care of the weapons? They've got three good receivers. They've got to have more balance in this offense. Yeah, he was giving Lane Kiffin an ulcer with some of those hits yes, he was taking. Yes. But what are you going to do? All right, Paul, what do you know about Alabama and what don't you know? We know they can beat bad teams. Uh, Field as the players get out there from both Ole Miss and Kentucky to get warmed up. Let's talk about Texas A&M a little bit, Jordan. Their matchup today at Mississippi State. They won the game last week, but Anaya Smith not missing the rest of the season with this leg injury. How massive of a loss is that for A&M? It's absolutely huge. I think yeah. in one way, when you play Texas A&M as a defensive coordinator, there's ways to make them one-dimensional. Now you take away their best. Anaya Smith, because defensively, we call him a gadget guy. He's the yeah. reverse guy. He's the one that they just just throw it out to. He's the jitterbug in space. He's a tough person to tackle. Those stats that George just talked about are just crazy, mind-blowing when you think about that, how much production they miss out on and how much production is on. Game is A&M has to spread it out because Mississippi State is so good at downhill hitting people in the mouth, playing physical, where Mississippi State is not as good defensively, is in space. When you're able to spread it out, tonight's game is... A&M has to spread it out because Mississippi State is so good at downhill hitting people in the mouth, playing physical, where Mississippi State is not as good defensively, is in space. When you're able to spread it out a little bit space, get Evan Stewart in space, get those guys the ball, that's when Mississippi State could miss every now LSU and then. LSU also has a running quarterback. Texas A&M does not. That is what's the big difference. So it's going to be interesting to see how Texas A&M gets it going offensively Don't without sleep on those Max. Weapons. Max can make a few plays <laughs> with his legs. He, he did against mobile. Arkansas. You know, Paul, it was a big moment for Jimbo to get the win last week against Arkansas. I think we felt kind of the pressure on him even in, Ar in Arlington. But I'm curious, as you pick this game between A&M and Mississippi State, what you think happens today? Because that narrative has been a bit of a roller coaster around Texas A&M this year. Well, Jimbo Fisher has somewhat survived the first part of this gauntlet. He, he let the, the App State get away, game get away, but he made up for it against a really horrendous Miami team. We all <laughs> gave way too much credit for that. And last week, I think the narrative is Arkansas blew it. So this is critical. We know what's next week. It's not, it's not being talked about like we, th we thought it would. Mm. But a loss here today in Mississippi is going to just put enormous situation he he gambled way too much against LSU but Mike Leach gets it done tonight I think the underrated part of this game and conversation is how good Texas A&M defense has been yeah. they've been really good up front a lot of guys filling in on the front good coverage on the back end I think it's a low scoring game but I think Mississippi State on defense wins this ball game it's like 17 13 I think I it's back and forth both defenses play well but I think actually the balance that Mississippi State is willing to have with just enough runs open thing so go ahead and head over there to tailgate with Marty and McGee I haven't walked all weekend so yeah get, get, those, too much, Roman. get those legs to work there Rome all right let's get to our doctor you guys think my mouth is gonna turn blue hey. thanks folks
Jordan Rogers, Tim Tebow, Roman Harper. I'm Laura. All right, so there's a lot that we need to get to, but I believe that people are warming up on the field right now. So let's go there live as we see Will Levis getting ready to play. It's, a, it's an important game for him, right, Jordan, when you think about the things that he's trying to prove. Obviously, be the biggest keys to Ole Miss not missing a beat this season right after a 10-win season last year is Lane Kiffin's usage of the transfer portal. How has he mastered that so well? well he's been better than anyone, and I think it's his personality. Now, we always think it's all about money right now for for people on the transfer portal, maybe in some places, but but not here. Uh, people, young players, quarterback situation. Paul Kiffin's found a way to cater his offense around the talent that he has. You know, really being a run-first offense, they're the best run game outside of any triple option offense that you'll find in college football. How do you think he's done that? I think it shows the flexibility and the maturity. That's not a word you often hear with Lane Kiffin, <laughs> but the maturity of Lane Kiffin as an offensive coach. Day maybe something else he got from Nick Saban, but he did say that throwing the ball downfield would be important for Dart. He likes these offensive weapons, Paul. I think there's some confidence yeah, there. I was I was very worried about you during that Lane Kiffin interview because uh, <laughs> I talked to him yesterday and he was in the exact same mood. And, and as funny as he can be, he can also be very droll as, as, as the 